Okay, you get the chance to meet all of your, you know, your favorite stars when you're in Hollywood. And I, and I met Prince, you know what I'm saying? The man, you know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, I mean, he's he cute, I mean, pretty. I mean, how do you say it? The outfit must be yellow, it must be lace, and it must have the butt out. I think that Prince reached the point that all career artists reach, where just the sheer chronology of it all, you, you will come to some sort of flat spots where sort of the confluence of what's happening in the culture, what's happening in, in, the, the, in the industry, what's happening on radio, whatever the case might be, and where you are and where you've been don't necessarily line up as perfectly as they did during the 1999 era. I completely disagree with that. People criticize him, you know, oh, he lost his creativity. He's not as good as he was in the 80s. Da, 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 da. He should have been just as big as Bruce Springsteen and Michael Jackson. It's not so much about popularity. If you look at my career, it's ever-changing sounds. He was still a juggernaut. The freedom that I had uh, came from a, a long, hard fight of trying to get them to understand that I wanted to be different. I never wanted to fit in with my music. Uh, whatever the trend was, I usually went the opposite direction. You know, I'm really a musician at heart. That's what I do. I am never true. Love is never true. Tell me what you know. Diamonds and Pearls was the first one that I recorded. It just seemed to encompass everything that this album is. It's a pop record. That was Diamonds and Pearls. That was the comeback album. What am I coming back to? Technology is cool, but you, you've got to use it as opposed to letting it use you. In Prince's head somewhere, he went, what if I had a band that sounded like hip hop with real instruments? Diamonds of Pearls era. That was uh, the start of that hip hop sample stuff. This is music and it's here to stay. This is our sound. This is what we do. <laughs> this I'm talk about me. Prince listened incessantly to what was going on. And then we try to distill it into something less DJ driven and more instrument driven. A lot of the stuff that we were trying to do was influenced by, by hip hop, definitely. There seems to be a glut of processed, prepackaged, producer-driven uh, music out there right now. So we're just trying to bring real musicians. The musicians and the songs and the spirit of which we made this music. It's the first time that he recorded with the three of us, Tommy and Sonny and I. It was a, it was a Monday night. We were rehearsing at Paisley and Prince comes downstairs. He had this idea for a song. He's like, do you have a minute to help me work this out? We stayed long enough to work out the song and then Prince was like, well, can we just record it quick before you guys leave? We moved the operation into Studio B and recorded it. That song was Diamonds and Pearls, actually. It went so well, he sent his bodyguards down to bunkers later on that night. Prince wants you guys to come uh, back out to the studio once you guys are finished. We went right back out to Paisley Park and recorded Live for Love. Quite a few songs on that record were live performances in the studio. We also ended up recording Cream. Well, to me, it's going to be the answer to Purple Rain, really. This has every bit of potential to be as big a hit, if not bigger, man. It was a turning point when I actually realized that Prince was not finished writing absolute masterpieces, man. When we went on tour, before Diamond Pearl came out, we had already been working on it. The music was already being done. All our stuff was getting written while we were on the news tour. Some things started in the studio, some things started on stage. We had to learn every damn song you could think of. Uh, Dance-wise, we had to put together routines for so many damn songs, man. And just, I mean, we had to step up our game about for choreography because we're doing, we were doing some of the movie. He's like, I want to do that. We picked up stuff real well. A lot of ideas were conceived while we were just jamming around. In Prince, there ain't really no such thing as loose. You kind of playing like you're in the studio all the time. He go back and watch the videotape. Like, we got to do something with that groove right there. Like you're having fun, but <laughs> play it right. Play something that complements what we're doing. 
I, I take pride in uh, having great bands. And we all speak the same language. Well, the music and the energy, I mean, that's 20,000 people. But, uh, but music actually gives me the spirit and the energy to perform. Does normally write your parts with Prince, or does he just kind of hand them to you and say, "Hey, go with it"? Uh, he would let me listen to the track. He would give me a, a guide, a basic. Here's what the song's about, and then uh, he would let me have that at full range. Like he likes to cut the records together really early with rough mixes and stuff. Yeah, it was pretty much. Here's what the track is, and again, it would just be spur of the moment. It would be like, "Hey, Tony, can you come down to the studio? Bring your lyric book." It's half and half, really. You know, if we play something he doesn't like, he'll tell us that's not working. We meet halfway, you know. I got you. It's a collaboration. My memory of Willing and Able, a particular evening in Tokyo at Sony Recording Studios. It was at the end of the nude tour. Japan was the last stop. Prince got bored and booked the studio. And it was Levi and Prince and I in this little studio recording the basic track for Willing and Able. And I made... Ow! Money Doesn't Matter. Money don't matter tonight. And Strollin'. So when we were doing it, we were just kind of jamming. It was just like, hey, that's a cool idea. You know, later on, he would listen at some things and go, oh, you know what? Maybe I'll put it out. Maybe I won't. The main uh, guitar part on the, the song, that arpeggio, do, 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 do. That's me on a Korg T3. I remember the patch. It was like the nylon guitar patch. He could do anything you could do. Because we would cut basics, then he'd go in and use what he liked and replace what he didn't like or add stuff and knew our place. He was calling the shots. If he didn't like your ideas, he wouldn't use them. I'm going to come back. We're going to polish that, and then I might put it up. I think the same night, we also recorded a rough demo of a song called Five Women for Joe Cocker. Every place he went, there was always a studio. Somebody was going to the studio. Somebody was going to do this. Somebody was going to lay a track here. You know, by the time we finished the new tour, we were already working on Diamond and Pearl, what it was going to look like. So there was no space in between where it was stopping up. Huh, what are we going to do now? No, there was none of that. It just rolled from the Rippin' Bridge, went right into Diamond and Pearl. We were rehearsing for that stuff. It's still be real fun. Um, I'm going to move on to some new things, and we're going to put together a really great show with a lot of great people. Well, the band, the new power generation is nine. Nine members, including Prince. Including and Prince. we have a five-piece horn section. And they're bad. And we have dancing girls. And we have and dancing and girls. And and we, we, have, we have all kinds of things going on. What do you like about playing with the band? Well, I think the most exciting thing is being able to do a lot of different forms of music because most bands are, you know, they're limited to one thing, R&B or rock or, you know, jazz or whatever. In this band, we get to do everything. Now, Diamond and Pearl was a whole album that said change from the new tour. We went from stripped down new tour to bright lights, a lot of action stuff going on. The music was incredible. It's in every show be different, but that's because we put in a lot of time uh, learning extra material that we may not use or may use, but it's nice to know that we know it so that at any point in time he can call off something and we can just jump right into it.
you had. Reach up in the cookie jar, give my tramp every dime. Let the kids run around home, they sleep on that pine. Don't make me say my mistake, baby. But you the one who did the wrong one. People know Prince was into the twin thing. Prince liked symmetry. Diamond and Pearl. I've known him for about three and a half, four years. I was a friend of his before this. I was in New York. I was living in New York at the time. It was raining and I was running to get in a cab. And I got in one side and I turned around and this man got in the other. Oh, it was friends. <laughs> this is my cab. He said, no, it's my cab. I said, well, I'm going uptown. He said, I'm going downtown. He drove me all the way uptown and then he went down. <laughs> <laughs> You've had to front up to the audition, you've had to kick your way through all these other bitches, and she's got the cab. <laughs> we cut so many different videos from that. We had all these extras coming in from different places. I'm going, oh my God. So there were hundreds of girls. For me, it started at the audition for the Cream video, and I went and auditioned for it. They were looking for about 20 female dancers. They wanted a set of twins, and they couldn't find any they liked, and they saw Lori, and they saw me, and they put us together. Yeah. They yeah. teach a whole long routine. Then they make cuts, they cut out a lot of people, and then you do it again, they cut a lot of people, they put you on videotape, they send it to Prince, and he picked us. I would have to say he is a private person and in his private life, but I think that when he comes comes to music, I think he shares a whole lot. That whole get off thing was based on calligraphy. It was a kind of a takeoff on, on the movie Caligula. The fact that he was able to pick up on Caligula shows that he's very inventive, and that he wants to do something different and something better. And he's noted for that, I believe. It's always uh, flattering to have someone imitate your work. It shows that you've impressed at least one other creative mind. You got dudes walking around trying to show they, you know, they drunk and the women have breasts and, and bronze gold painted. And you're like, well, God dang, look at this. What in the hell is just going on right now? I'm Diamond and this is Pearl. <laughs> Pearl? Now move your big ass around this way so I can work on that zipper, big day. That was, it was my big ass. Oh, oh, Prince! Oh, oh, oh you're talking oh, about him. Prince. Um, we work with him. We work for him. We hang out with him. Spend time with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we have the schedule worked out sometimes. When, when he's in town, of course. Are you sleeping with Prince? We have a lovely working relationship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's not satisfied with that answer at all. <laughs> So are you or aren't you? Well, that's like the whole personal that. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Yeah, we, we had a lot to do with the editing and, and, and stuff like that. Forget off. We got to edit that a little bit. Uh -huh. Yeah, so. it was fun. Well, the shot where my dress gets ripped off, I got to kind of choose which shot. Cause... Oh. Well, the cameraman was in the back all the time on my butt, and I didn't want that shot. Yeah, he, <laughs> well, he had a plan. On how he wanted to look, he was a chef, dude. He already had in mind what he wanted to serve up to everybody. Um, you know, we played in clubs when we started out. That's where a lot of the freaky pictures come from. You know, it was a harder, more adult audience. We were going to Los Angeles. Um, he was going to be on the MTV Music Awards, and then we were going to do the Arsenio Hall show. Therese, his secretary, came up to the wardrobe department one day. She said, well, you better sit down. This is what he wants for the MTV Music Awards. She gave us the parameters that he had given to her. The outfit must be yellow. It must be lace. And it must have the butt out. Well, what does that really mean? And this was, was very close to the time we were going on to Los Angeles. We're talking just a few days that we had to get this together. Less than a week, let's say. I had to come up with two sketches, one with more exposure. We knew that we had to achieve this, and I came up with two sketches, and then I had to present it to him later that day. I had used a pattern we had had before, so we chose a lace, and we would have to have it dyed. But, of course, not before I gave him the sketch. I was so nervous. How do you present something like this to a guy? It's like, well, here's your butt. And he just took a pencil, crossed out the one. He tried everything on before. Well, did Prince try that on? If somebody says, shorten the, you have them put the jacket on and you will shorten the sleeve. With Prince, it, there was none of that. It was all guesswork. That's where Jim Sharon came in. He knew Prince's body. And if Prince said, make it tire, Jim Sharon, that he could guess. He did a fabulous job. We made it just in the nick of time. And when I was on the plane going to Los Angeles, I was still stitching lace one of his shoes. Okay, great, thanks. 
course, it was a secret. We weren't to tell anyone what he was wearing. Not even the band knew. That was a surprise. I was right backstage. It was really exciting for me. And then our little prayer before we walked out on stage, he had a trench coat on. Oh, we get on stage, dude. The lights went down, and brother took the coat off and threw it. D, you gotta fall on me. And we did that little scream. The light came up. What? And uh, I'm like, oh shit! I started planking, oh, and I immediately put my arms like in a lock position to not be on him. You know, and then we started the show. It's family TV, but the family got the fear at the side. You know what? You can just yell at the air. All out in the public to see. Oh my God, I cannot believe that he had his pants cut out in the back like that. See me backing up, trying to not look at his ass. That's where it's the show. When people backstage saw it, there was a big buzz. It was pretty exciting. On TV, we rehearsed for that out in LA. They wanted to make sure that he didn't pull nothing funny. Oh my God. He's an artist. Only Prince could have gotten away with that. He was able to wear almost anything. The way he wore something, it wasn't just that he could wear it, but it was the way that he wore that thing. His attitude, he wore it with confidence, no apologies. People thought, wow, oh my God, that's amazing. It just is what it is. You really just, you can't help but be sexy. Is his rear end really showing? Well, no, it has to be an illusion. So we had to have all of that dyed skin tone. That was a real gamble for him. It was actually really, really smart. It was all over the news. Oh, they, they called it so many different things. The Swiss cheese. And then they started calling it the butt out costume. Go put on some clothes. I told you it's funky like doo doo. My yellow pants disappeared from my dressing room and now I know who stole them. People think, uh, people think I'm proud of my ass, all right? That Arsenio backstage had said something to him about it. And, and it wasn't all, you know, roses the next day. There was a lot of fun poking. People teased him about it. Yeah! I, I got a hold in my jeans. What are jeans by Prince? They're everything they're cracked up to be. <laughs> Ultimately... I consider it a smashing success. It's certainly the most notorious costume he ever wore. Uh, you've got hired for the Diamonds and Pearls tour. I opened up for him on the Diamonds and Pearls tour. We go go dance up on little boxes in little tiny outfits. I saw Maite walking down the hall and I knew Carmen was there. Jill's here. Ingrid's around the corner. She like, there's so many women. I think it's important to keep uh, my private life private. People always say it and, you know, not to look him in his eyes and, you know, hypnotize you. 